nothing, and I mean nothing, will give you more ROI in regards to home value than remodeling your kitchen. And arguably the most important aspect of that kitchen are the cabinets. Now, you could spend thousands of dollars tearing all the cabinets out wholly, or you could save yourself thousands of dollars by simply refacing them. What is refacing? Refacing, and specifically in this instance, kitchen cabinets, means to remove the doors and refresh them in some manner. Also, if you have face fronts, you're gonna wanna update those as well. Any part of the cabinet that you would see when you walk into that kitchen. That could mean simply repainting if you have good quality doors and they're not damaged in any way. In my case, however, my doors are pretty poopy. A second option, however, is to do what I'm doing and build whole new doors. Now let's not forget about any toe kicks, face fronts, filler pieces, all that stuff. You have to do those as well, but I'm not gonna worry about those in this video. I'm gonna have a whole series covering that coming up. Let's go do this. Let's talk about the basic design and components of a kitchen cabinet door. Five pieces, two styles, the rails, and the center panel. The panel can be raised, it cannot be raised. Obviously, here's a door that I've already built. I am using a flat panel design. The door can be made out of whatever material you choose. There is no right or wrong. It's just different materials are gonna give you different things that you're gonna have to deal with later on. So if you use a board with knots in it, and you're gonna paint them like I did here, you're gonna have to deal with trying to cover up those knots later on in the process. So, if you don't wanna deal with that, don't use a board with knots in it. So on, so forth, yada, yada, yada. Back to the cutting. I have 18 kitchen cabinet doors to build. I don't have to tell you, that's a lot of different pieces. To keep everything straight, I keep all my rails and styles grouped by door, and I use blue tape to designate which door is which. So A1 goes with door A1. It's not rocket science here, Pete. I'm using a tongue and groove design to assemble my doors. It's simple, it's easy, and most importantly, they're strong and sturdy. The first thing I always cut is the groove. I'm not gonna deal with cutting the panels right now, just my rails and styles. Why do you always cut the groove first? Well, Mr. Football Stress Doll Dude, because all four sides of my doors get a groove cut in them. That keeps my brain usage at a minimum for a little longer. Also, because it's easier to cut the grooves and then cut the tongues to fit the grooves than it is the other way around. Now, don't be fooled by my selective editing. The tongues get the same amount of care, maybe even a little bit more. There are a lot of test pieces being cut and a lot of measuring taking place. Just to show you that I mean what I say, this right here was my first try at cutting the tongue. Yeah, this was my second. Close, no cigar. The third try, well that was the charm. Nice and smooth across the top, and one piece holds the other snug, but not overly tight. Remember those panels I said I wasn't gonna worry about just a few moments ago? Well, everything has its time in the sun. Now I have learned not to get too cute with the circular saw. And by that, I mean I cut everything oversized by about a quarter of an inch. Then I can take it over to my table saw with the raw pieces and cut everything to final dimension. Blue tape 
is our friend. It helps me keep track of which panel belongs to which door. Now, if you're wondering why I don't just write on the panels with a pencil, it's because later I'm going to be sanding and I need to be able to keep track of my pieces all the way through this right up into the point where I attach the hinges and the handles. Blue tape allows me to keep track of which door is which all the way through the process right up until the point where I attach said hinges and handles. And the reason why that's important is because you don't want to be drilling holes for handles and hinges on the wrong side of doors, having them upside down, and then you can't fix it once you get to that point. All right, so doing a check of what we got so far, we've got the styles, we've got the rails, and we've got the panels. So I guess what we need to do now is put everything together. Now, I have never really found where doing it one way is particularly better than doing it another way. I just sort of stick a panel in a style, maybe a rail, maybe a rail in a style, maybe a style in a rail, style, style, rail, rail panel style. Sti okay, you get what I'm saying. Glue. Now here is the one time that I really feel like it's important to get an equal and even coverage of glue throughout the joint. Now because my cabinets are of a faceless design, it's really important that my doors are true and square. After some paint, handles, and hinges, these doors are ready for some showing. Yes, I'll have those videos for you. Click up in the corner, check the description down below, either or. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Smash the thumbs up button. Leave a comment. How?